Sociology is interested in how the social world works. Especially it is interested in social wholes like states, communities, organizations and groups. They can be called macro-social reality. Individual human beings are the crucial component of these macro-scale social formations. Individuals and their interactions are the micro-social reality. Many of the central questions in sociology are related to relations between macro and micro. Social structures and institutions influence how individuals think and behave. However, nothing in the social world works without individual action. After all, the large-scale social formations are basically made of individuals and their social relationships. The society is not a mere sum of individuals. But how do macro facts depend on facts about individuals? This is what sociologists wish to understand. The Coleman diagram, or the Coleman boat, is an intellectual tool designed to help to think about these micro-macro relations. It was made famous by James Coleman, an influential American sociologist. This video will show you how the diagram works. Let us first take a look at the components. At the top we have the macro scale social reality and at the bottom there is an individual agent. The diagram is flexible. Depending on whether we are interested in groups, organizations or nations, we can choose that as the macro scale. The micro usually consists of individual persons, but in some applications the micro agents can also be families, firms or other organized groups. When using the diagram, the starting point is a relation between macro nodes A and D. The arrow 4 refers to a hypothetical causal relation between them. With the help of the diagram, we can study whether such causal relation makes sense. This is done by reconstructing the underlying causal mechanism. Understanding the mechanism is important for two reasons. First, the absence of a sensible and empirically supported mechanism raises serious doubt about the causal relation. Second, the mechanism provides explanatory understanding. Understanding how the cause produces the effect is the key for scientific phenomenon. Does universal basic income increase or decrease social inequality? This is a causal claim about macro-social facts that can be used as an illustration. In the diagram, the introduction of the basic income by the government would be the node A and the change in social inequality, the node D. The arrow 4 would represent the suggested causal relation. The relevant micro-agent would be individuals and families. The first step in the reconstruction of the mechanism is to figure out how the macro change influences an individual. This is the arrow 1. The macro change can transform the opportunities and incentives of the individual. It can also influence her beliefs or desires. For example, the introduction of the basic income could change individual's level of income, her relation to welfare bureaucracy and her beliefs about what is expected from her. It is also possible that the basic income changes the skills and abilities of the individual by influencing her educational choices. All these multiple influences are registered at the node B. The same macro change can influence different individuals differently. In the case of basic income, person's employment status, level of income and age make important differences. For this reason, it's not sufficient to assume that any individual can represent the whole population. The causal influence of A on B is mediated by structural and institutional background conditions. The same policy change can have very different consequences in different institutional contexts. While these background conditions are not represented in the diagram, one of its purposes is to help social scientists to think about them. The next step is the arrow 2. It covers the theory of individual behavior. Do the changes in B have behavioral consequences and if so, what are they? In the case of basic income, we can assume that changes in work-related incentives will affect behavior of some individuals, but will changes in social expectations also have behavioral consequences? Here, sociologists can be helped by psychological theories and findings, but quite often they have to rely on their own common sense. The behavioral assumptions matter, but they can be empirically tested. 
The note C leaves us with changes in individual behaviors. To complete our sociological analysis, we have to get back to macro social facts. This is covered by the arrow 3. According to Coleman, this micro to macro link has been neglected in sociological theory. It is still quite common to assume that the macro outcome is a mere aggregate or an average of the micro facts. One of the reasons for this is the interdependence of micro actions. The behavior of an individual depends on how other individuals behave. This feedback loop can be represented by the arrow 5. In this loop, the original changes in behavior bring about new changes in B. If the labor market participation goes down, it becomes easier to find a new job and the salaries will go up. This will affect the behavior of the people still in the labor market. If part-time working becomes more common, more people would find it an acceptable alternative. However, if the number of people working goes down, that would also affect how much taxes the government can collect. This would affect the level of basic income the society can provide. These interdependencies make the social analysis both exciting and difficult. Only by understanding how they work, it is possible to make sense of the micro-macro link. What is the effect of basic income on social inequality will depend on these details. This video has shown how the Coleman diagram can be used to analyze complex social processes. The diagram is not a summary of any particular sociological theory. It is a device for making it easier to see what kind of theories we need.